Toss, gentlemen, it's all yours. Heads is the call. Heads it is. Nasser, you've won the toss. Uh, what are you electing to do? Uh, we're going to bat. It uh, looks a good wicket. Bit of grass on it again. It'll nip about with a new ball, but uh, you know we, we like batting first. Team in this series now, you, you're confident? Yeah, I mean, we're only as good as how we play today. This is the game that we left England for a few months ago. You know, we drew in India and we're level here. So this is the game that we've, we've all been waiting for. We're up for it and we've got to put in a good performance today. Um, unfortunately, Michael Vaughan's injured and uh, Shah comes back into the side. All right, Nasser, good best of luck today. Thanks, Mark. Good luck. Cheers. Cheers. Stephen, we'll bring you in now. You've lost the toss. Uh, first of all, thoughts on that? Uh, well, it's a very good wicket. Traditionally, it's a very good wicket. We uh, we won chasing here last time. That's the positive. But uh, we're going to have to bowl well first up. Everything to play for. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a final situation. And uh, with the way the season's gone, it means a lot to us, obviously, uh, to finish the one-day part of this this year uh, pretty well. So we're very determined, disappointed with the last two results, but uh, looking forward to today. Stephen, any changes to your unit today? No, same living. OK, thanks very much. Yes, thanks same. for joining us. OK, there we are then. That's the toss that's been made here at Carisbrook. Nasser Hussain has won it for England and they've elected to bat first. The sun is shining. The stage is set for the climax of this National Bank one-day series between New Zealand, the hosts, and England. Couldn't be cried. Michael Vaughan is injured. We saw him take that tumble in Auckland. He's uh, got a partial dislocation of his uh, right shoulder. So he has to uh, make way for O.A. Shah. Zealand are playing the same 11. No place for Ian Butler, the young paceman. Brendan McCullum, who's under a bit of pressure, retains his place in the side. Important match this for both sides. It'll be a real springboard to either team if they can win this uh, series. And in 100 one-day internationals. 58 years of age now. The first ball, Daryl Tuffy, will be the bowler from the railway end. Yeah, get some seam movement. Be interested to see what he can do in test match cricket. Being off from work early and making their way to Carisbrook, which at the moment is bathed in sunshine. Triscothic off the mark, and beautifully so. That's four from just the second ball. Well, it's in India. Come back 3-1 down in India to draw that series 3-8 they're doing exactly the same here Nasser Hussain winning the toss good work point with Toscothic on strike got a bit about him this uh, Daryl Tuffy well, that line and that length no express pace. The thing about getting the ball in the right areas, particularly at medium fast. Straight to gully, and Trescothic has missed out again. Almost a predictable dismissal. First blood to New Zealand. England are eight for one. He pitches it up. Gets it into the right area, as we said, it's Harris, who's at backward point, business position, one-day cricket. He keeps missing out, Marcus Truscothic, he's gone for five. England. Close for the cut shot. Up and over the slips, that'll uh, race away for four. Too much width from uh, Andre Adams. Typical left-hander shot once he's given any sort of width from a right-arm over bowler. Once he gets that width there, just throw the bat at it. Always prepared to go over the top of slips, it's a poor ball. Well, that's uh, Hussain's off the mark shot. It's a very fine one indeed. Five overs completed, 22 for one now.
Here's uh, Adams in tonight. Knight uh, down the track. That's away for four as well. England determined to make use of these uh, first 15 overs. Side leg stump. Flays the bat. Opens the face of the bat and gets the ball over the infield. Pitch. Hussain <laughs> had to hurry in the end and he's not impressed with Tuffy who I think in the air again this one's cleared uh, mid-wicket bounces uh, three or four times before crossing the road that short boundary is only about uh, 67 meters like a long play record but no ball short on this pitch it's only 66 yards over there he's not hit that at all Nasra said it's the top of the bat he's looked anxiously as to whether he may be caught but he just bounces a couple of times before it finds the boundary response from behind the stumps that's a way for four that's the risk with uh, having long leg up in the circle three boundaries exactly the same number as uh, Nick Knight that gets the run rate up above uh, 4.6 and over it's in the air out Harris takes his second catch and Nick Knight for Knight's gone for 24. That's on the up from Hussain and he's threaded it through between gully and backward point for four. 50's up for England, 53 for two. That's Hussain would have been worried for a split second, but once he realised it wasn't going to a gully fielder, he knew it before. He's found uh, the gap this time in front of square. It's a good stroke from Hussain. Genuine uh, square cover drive, good batting service. Indicated uh, by that stroke from Thorpe, that's just uh, eased through the offside. Off form, you'd really fancy this guy because he's he's nothing more than medium pace. So he's got very little margin for error. I don't even bother chasing that. That's four. Stephen Fleming doesn't look overly impressed. Slid that through, Graham Thorpe looking for the Yorker, I don't think it was quite a Yorker. Thorpe has played across the line at that. Maybe he's getting a little too confident. This is up there straight. Thorpe looking to whip it away through the leg side and maybe it should have been down the ground. England's four man's gone for nine. It's 62 for three. Unfortunately injured after Christchurch. Shah has played two games in this series, seven and... Uh, oh well it's a no ball so there you go otherwise everybody would have been up good decision well over two or three inches Shah that's nicely played Shah looking for the short boundary and finding it be here away Shah been for a long time too he's been patient and he's pulled up 
That's a slower ball. He's seen that out of the hand. And he's taken it really from the line of off stump behind square. So that is a shot of a very talented player and a player who looks like... Oh! Shah caught in two hands ah! and he has to get the dive out in the end. He's not... Took forever to get going. It was a staggered start and then... He was, I think he was gone. Naked eye says, uh, out, look at the ball. Yep, he'd have been gone. Oh, lovely turn. Three. Good start by Vittori, just two singles off the over. Oh! Daniel Vittori picked up three wickets in the opening match in Christchurch, Colin... He went at 4.9 and over in Napier, but the rest of the time he's had a very good overall economy rate. And it is, in fact, under 3.5 for oh, this series. Shah a long way down the pitch for that delivery. Well, Hussain's found uh, the gap. That's incredible. Those fielders are only about uh, four or five yards apart. And Nasr Hussain has got it between them. Vittori. And that's exactly what they did. Harris dived past it. It beat Astle. Vittori. Enough to send the young spinner old very quickly. England are obsessed with the, just that one innings from Michael Vaughan. What an impact he made before that unfortunate injury. That's a beautiful shot. Look at the saying, he's right down there next to him saying, you do. So vital to get those boundaries early in the over to take the pressure off yourself as a batsman. often drop an extra man back for the last couple of deliveries. So, technically it's a chance. This brings the 50 partnership will push through and I think it's quite a big one Shah. Short ball. I don't think he's a prize for catching that. In fact he's done well to stop it. Yeah. Just uh, three fours in that 50 partnership. Well, down the ground. And it's the first boundary for a while. I think that's what England have got to think about. Well, it, you keep your eye on the ball. He does that here. A lot of intent there from Shah as he gets the ball straight. He's not the best shot he's ever going to play. But he gets four. No. That's quite cleverly played. I don't mind that at all. Ball was outside the off stump. He didn't try and smash it. He's just lifted it over the infield. That's a clever shot. Get to the pitch of the ball. Make the ball or do something different. It's a lovely shot there. No, I think that's a classy improvised shot. It's a full face of the bat. It's not one of these little dinks down the leg side that might get you single. So, to me... Yeah. Much better cricket. Good feeling again from Chris Harris, but good running. Good calling. There was never a single. There is now, though. It's uh, unfortunate for the fielder. It was good fielding. That's uh, never quite understand that rule. It's a little bit hot. And uh, that's his first of 13 matches. It's nicely played. But, uh, just a little bit low on the bat. Well, that's a good piece of fielding. That's what you want, you see your quick bowlers, or opening bowlers, diving around like that. Straight for the fielder at mid-wicket. And Nasser departs. But as you say, that's because of the four dot balls that needed. No, it's just what New Zealand needed, four dot balls, and then something different from a set. He just finds the middle of the bat, but he finds Chris Cairns. To 50 and out for the captain, 133 for four, England. Average of uh, 25 and a half and over. Yeah. 
Now we'll get the two here. Oh, it was a tall pull. No, no acceleration in that fourth wicket partnership. Very sort of static partnership, just uh, overs ones and twos and three. Fair enough, once the third wicket had fallen, yeah, up till about the 20th over, but then you'd want to see increase. Well, that's run away fine for four. That's a bit of a bonus for... Uh, very fine off a, I suppose, off stump line. Saw uh, a adjusting his guard, taking uh, or asking the umpire where off stump was when he was facing this in the last over. I think he's decided to get as far uh, over towards off stump as he can. This will be close. England field. That's found the gap, that's four more. Lovely stroke. Wristy stuff from Collingwood. From Collingwood, it's short and wide and got the treatment it deserved. To my mind, there's been far too much uh, angled bat and... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And the players love that uh, sweep shot and the... This time, Shah does get his 50. 75 balls. That's an important knock for England after they lost the experienced hands of Trescothic, Knight and Thorpe early. Fleming still concerned. He doesn't want to be chasing too many. That's well timed. Short boundaries again on these uh, rugby grounds in New Zealand. This is timed quite beautifully mentioned before he was looking to get as far over onto the offside as he can that ball was probably just shaving off stump and he's hit it behind square it's well played picked his gap nicely he timed it quite superbly that's out this time he hasn't made any contact he's played across the line and missed it Shah goes for 57, that's the breakthrough that Stephen Fleming was looking for, to 39. Good bowling this by Cairns because he wasn't uh, distracted by the previous ball, kept it full and that was hitting middle and off. Shah's gone for 57, 170 for 5. Well, it's got him slower ball, Andrew Flinter for some reason wanted to give himself room, he's just tried him down the ground, Chris Cairns done to a turn. It's that little slower delivery, it's a nothing ball, but it's deadly. It's bang on middle. Where's Andrew Flintoff going? Way outside Lake Stump. Spot to bother now for England. 172 for six. There's the wicket. Stephen Fleming takes the catch. It was short and wide. And Collingwood trying to get it over the infield. If he had, he would have got four. He didn't. Him. Comes back into the attack, Chris Cairns. And again, not the best ball. But it's not the best shot. Looking to go over the top, Paul Collingwood finds the tall. Stephen Fleming at backward point. 21 for him. One in. The wicket. The wicket of uh, Paul Collingwood. It's a better shot. Probably go to the boundary. A lot of space down there. Just didn't seem to be uh, aware of that. The full face of the bat shot. I think that's a really good shot. Over extra cover, it's as safe as you like. There's one, there's no fielder there, but you're using all the bat. Again, another shot hit through the cut. As you say with the full use of the bat. Look at the runs off the over. Ten. It's 194 for seven with four overs to go. This is going to be bonus runs. We talked about the odd boundary and whether it'll come. It does come. You know, I think that's big runs there for England. How many times do we say that bring fine leg up is dangerous? He just manoeuvres the ball on the leg side. Full toss, Craig White. That's hit pretty well. It could be out, though. It's unlucky. 
straight down the ground but finds Nathan Astor. He'll feel a little unlucky there. Craig White and perhaps with some justification. Wicket. Yeah, he's not hit it out of the middle of the bat. It's a thick outside edge. Good catch to Astle. 17 for Craig White. 2 on 4 for 8. Well, Good. waiting in the tunnel. Helmet on, pads on. Not quite. He gets a single. So, England's bowlers have got something to work with. Not as much as they would have thought on this wicket. 218 for 8. In the 50 overs. Good innings from Ashley Giles. 21 runs from just 23 deliveries. He's the man that's been in form for England, just starting to time the ball. Oh, it's Shah. A little scratchy at the start, but picked it up towards the end. Shared in that part. England then, from their 50 overs, 218 for eight. Good effort by New Zealand. All the ball is played the part. They bowled as a team. They were well used by Stephen Fleming. Well, it's batting that has been a problem for New Zealand. We'll see. Record in uh, one day international cricket, but he's had a rough time in this series. Sort of chasing over 200 runs to finish off one day international. No stroke play. Steve Dunn says not out. Well, it nipped just going to miss off stump or he's not going to come back sufficiently to hit off stump usually goes the other way towards slip but that nips back off the surface nothing too adventurous uh, with the field from Nasr Hussain good line from Goff that's away past uh, Thorpe for Thorpe two shot from Goff Dismissive by Astle. Guards this boundary here. Another very good shot indeed. This one's uh, flown away through the offside. Well, he's all forward. Just rocks back. You'll have enjoyed that, Nathan Astle. This is a very, very special shot. Well, he is overdue, but he is a quality one-day international batsman. Nevin, two, Astle, nine. Twelve without loss, New Zealand. That's beaten mid-on, and it's a long chase for Ashley Giles. Haven't seen many threes on this ground. But this will be one of them. Good shot down. Well, that goes up in the air. White's after it. He's not going to reach it. And it just pitches inside the rope and spins back. Now, where's that gone? Throws everything at it, the ball goes in there. 66 yards, that is. Where's this gone? Oh, it's hit the roof. <laughs> it's hit the roof and come back into play. And Craig White thinks he's still in play. Up and over cover. Sharp's got no chance with that one. That's beautifully timed by Nevin. England. It's just about back of a length. He'll always stay back, Nevin, always. Not the best player off the front foot, not a driver. But anywhere just short of a length, he'll try to get the ball over the infield. It's a good end for... And there is Nick Knight. But he couldn't hang on to that. Just knocks the bat around in his hands there and come off a, an outside edge. It's a thick outside edge. Astle on the drive, it's in the air a while, just really out of reach of Knight. That's away for four as well, just behind square on the offside. The same thought he had the gap plugged. Football 
short. There's absolutely nothing for short. Meist, it's a good shot. Now then, England on the defensive, no slips in position. No slips, England push back. Just bounces in front of Collingwood, who tries to take the catch, but that's through him for four as well. Disappointment for Hoggard in England, but Astle's racing along here. He's scoring it better than a runner ball. Well, this is Astle at his best. Taking the fast ball is on. Just rides his look there. Now, what does Collingwood do? Does he come in for the catch? He doesn't. I think he tries to get his body behind that. He gets an awkward bounce, to be fair. And he is looking for a catch. He's well in from the boundary edge there. Oh, well. Short extra cover and the short mid-wicket. Down the track he goes. That's wide and mid-on. Giles won't catch that. It's another boundary. England are in trouble here. He's dangerous. England haven't used the bouncer at all. Nothing short. He's been quite happy to come down the pitch. Just about gets that away off a thick inside edge, but it will run away for four. Well, there's a misunderstanding there, and Shah misses the stumps. Nevin would have been about four feet short. Him at one stump and just about misses always shot. Practice, practice, practice again. They'll do that day in, day out. Yeah, you're smiling now, but you wouldn't have been. <laughs> Verdict this time again. It's not out from Steve Dunn. Standing. Actually, now I've been in the drive. You're on offside. There he goes, and that's gone a long way. It's gone for six. And Nathan Astor is enjoying himself. The crowd are enjoying it. He's just given himself a little bit of room, and Hoggard's followed him. And right in the slot, heading out towards uh, the city of Dunedin. That's the best shot of the game so far. Nathan Astor's second six. That one's slightly more orthodox than the first. Brings the 50 up, and that's come in. Just eight overs. Edged, and there it is. That's the wicket. And Flintoff has got the breakthrough again. With him playing away from his body, trying to cut the ball, probably too close to him. Delivery from Flintoff, bouncing pace. Nevin gets a thick edge. Just says, "Yes, we're in this game. Come on, lads." Nevin goes for 15. Surprise selection, my thoughts, in the first place. Well, he's gone after this one. He's got enough bat on it. It'll go for four. Warren Roth. Goff will be left scratching his head. Well, he's onto this quite quickly. Hasn't got it out in the middle of the bat. He ended up hitting it one-handed, I think. So not the most confident shot, but he's uh, got enough bat on it. And that'll do his confidence, though, a lot of good. Got an interesting technique, he gets sort of uh, forward, but he's also on his heels. And uh, he doesn't look as though he's uh, quite in control of his footwork. Nice well, hit and hit very, very hard. There's a bit of width there, but that is smashed away. We'll know that uh, when Nathan Astor plays this shot like that, he's uh, pretty much nearing the top of his peak form. He's really enjoying it out here at the brook. I was about to say whether England should have a gully. I just think he went rifle. This time, Craig White can cut it off. Well, that is magnificent. That's his third six, and that is the best of the lot for me. No doubt about it. That's the bowler who's been the most menacing. 
He's got under it with the full face. The bottom hand's come up and just clunked it. Good hit here at uh, Carisbrook. And there's a damaging blow in more ways than one for England. Well, it's Nathan Astle's day. Banged in. He's gone for it. He's got some bat on it. Maybe a bit of glove, but it's four more runs. And, uh, half out of shot. He went for it. And fortune favours the brave. If you uh, throw the bat at it hard enough, you'll get some reward, particularly on this pitch. Where it uh, comes off the bat pretty nicely and races away on this outfield. That's out. This time chopped onto the stumps. Off stump. No, no. Go. Good straight bowling. And McCullum's trying to cut it. That's why the pad's getting in the way. That's why he probably should be LBW. But he plays it on to end his uh, miserable summer. You've got a feel for the young man. He's gone for 777 for two. That's 50. 50 for Nathan Arsenal in his 150th uh, game for New Zealand. And what a 50 it's been. Just 42 balls, seven fours and three sixes. Edged. Caught this time. Knight's got it just. More by luck than judgment, I think. Yes, and we talked about the bowler bowling around the wicket, and that's exactly why you should. Well, he's only just grabbed that too, Nick Knight, hasn't he? But to his credit, he held his poise, and the ball stuck. Big, big wicket for England. The captain's on his way for... 25. That's a better-looking shot. That's away. Three mid off for four runs. This is a much better shot from Mike Millen. He gets his weight into the ball over pitch from Andrew Flintoff one of the things that they will have talked about England too Luke. Craig White again from the railway end get a couple here down to Matthew Hoggard at fine leg Hoggard has to go the other way That's far away for four. Thorpe got to the ball, but he couldn't drag it back. To be cut away. Square on the offside, despairing dive by Graham Thorpe. Gets a hand on it, it just trickles over for four. Bowlers hate that, going for a boundary off the very first ball of the over. Oh, that's away. It's gone fine. Thorpe has given up the chase already. That's away for four. Happened a couple of overs ago. Giles conceding a boundary off his first ball. It lets it come, lets it come, lets it come, and then just eases it past wicketkeeper and that backward point. That's a big hit over mid-wicket. That's gone well into the uh, terracing. New Zealand be very forceful, strong shot this. In the trade, they call it a slog sweep. Doesn't go behind square, it goes about 20 rows back. And that brings up the 50 partnership. And that's what NASA Hussain has in the bank. 218 runs. And Goff up his sleeve. I think Goff will have one more farewell fire up before he goes. That's a good shot straight down the ground the best area to hit any bowler it was there to be hit Craig McMillan's been very quiet and one with the arm right into the half volley slot and playing with a straight bat McMillan hits it beautifully down the ground that's a good shot don't need to run for those that brings the 150 up 153 for three now to have another catcher and that's fair enough I'm not expecting that Darren Goff will get flat batted three point 
Just a shade short. First game, Christchurch, we got 67 but out. Probably on the way to another one. Hey, Millen's decided that he wants to get in the act. And he hits it down the ground for four. It's 160 for three from 35. Flintoff is not working at the moment. Beautifully played that. Timed and uh, hit down behind point. It seems a long time since he said he's a dangerous player. This can be just his surface. Played wonderfully well. Simon in the crowd. It's yep. forced away. Won't go for four. <laughs> oh, that's out. Well, it's not out, according to Steve Dunn. That looks so, so close. Nip Biker looks as if he's going straight into middle and leg. That's the first appeal and a bit more. Not out. Um. Crashed away, backward a point. What a way to go to 100. And it's in his 150th one day international as well for Nathan Astle. It's his second against England. And it looks like being a match winner. 97. Oh, thank you very much. In the middle of the bat. He knows instantly, that's gone for four, arms aloft. Well, that's close, that's gone. Now then, McMillan has gone for 44, Goff gets his reward, it's the first ball of his last over. McMillan can't be aggrieved at that. Might just have the final say, Darren Goff and England. We've talked about breaking the partnership, it's absolutely storm dead LBW. McMillan 44, now then, game on, 180 for four. To see Chris Cairns, they want to see some big boundaries from him before New Zealand romp home, 180 for four. In the air, out, gone! Hussain gets uh, the catch, it's a dolly of a catch and Goff is starting to deliver. Now there's game on, Cairns has gone third ball. What a shot awful shot to mid off doesn't do it again Chris Cairns Goff does, Hussain does England are back in this 180 for 5 Der Cairns has gone for naught. just 3 balls he faced 2 wickets in this over from Darren Goff there's a big gap there now that's away for 4 and I think that's the way England have got to uh, address it this summer Got, it's uh, very firmly back at Giles. We've got about 21 days, haven't we? Coming up before the... Will. On the ground. And Astle has put the game beyond England now. Six straight back over the bowler's head. That'll do very nicely. It's up onto the roof and out of the ground. Astle has done it. One of the great one-day innings we've witnessed this evening by Nathan Astle. He's come back to form with a real... Rash bang wall up here at Carisbrook, 122 not out. New Zealand are home and hose. They've won by five wickets and take the National Bank series by three matches to two. They got off to a winning start in Christchurch. They won by four wickets there and went 2-0 up at Wellington, where they humiliated England by 155 runs. But then England bounced back at Napier, they took that one by 43 runs. At Auckland, England, with the help of the Duckworth-Lewis method, won by 33 runs. But it's been New Zealand's day and night tonight, and one man in particular, Nathan Astle. New Zealand take the series, and in the end, they did it emphatically. Look at, And he went into his shell for a while after that explosive start, but it was an explosive finish as well as he took the match out of England's reach. Craig McMillan's contribution was very important. 44 runs, but was he plum LBW before he'd scored? Everybody else uh, struggled until Vincent came in and combined with Astle to see New Zealand home. 
Baron Goff, two for 42, did very, very well. He's on that plane home, playing in the Test Series. Matthew Hoggard, we'll see a lot more of him in this New Zealand summer. And Andrew Flintoff, he'll...